So, do you trust voice-activated speakers? And should we? So six years ago, I was working with some good friends. We were turning a fun music game called Beat the Intro into an app. As part of our development, we met some Amazon contacts in Seattle and they had given us a new device that they were about to launch and they called it an Alexa speaker. So we brought it home and we set it up and we were in a meeting one day when after about 20 minutes, one of us mentioned the word Alexa. And from the other side of the office, this female robotic voice said, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Well, we looked at each other and we laughed a little nervously and then we realised it was on. And then realised that it must have been listening to everything we said in order to react to the name. And I guess that for many people, that's the problem, isn't it? For these devices to work, they need to be on all the time and then they listen to every word we say, turning our voices into a digital sound wave they're looking for the right shape of that part of that wave that matches the word Alexa when we say it or whatever the right word is on your device. I mean, it's genius technology and it's incredibly clever. And for many people, these devices, Amazon's Alexa, Google's Assistant and Apple's Siri are the main three, of course. They really have been a life changer. I mean, think of it for many blind, disabled and elderly people just being able to speak to this device, to turn on your radio, to control your lights, your TVs, heating and so on, has made everyday life really a whole lot easier. So many devices can now be controlled by either these voice assistants or apps that a new network's been developed with a nickname the Internet of Things. You may have heard of it. But being linked to these devices means they're linked to us and they can harvest really valuable data from us about our lives. Do I need my new washing machine to be linked to the internet so I can control it with an app on my way home? Do I need to be able to turn my central heating on or off while I'm on holiday? Uh, and do I really need to be able to turn my car's heater on or even open the garage door and let it drive itself out onto my driveway all by app? No. But, I mean, it's really clever. There are now an estimated 8 billion of these voice-activated devices out in the world. That's roughly one per person, rather scarily. Now, if you are one of the many people who won't have an Alexa or Apple or Google Home speaker in your home because you don't want any Big Brother style eavesdropping on your conversation, then you need to give, get rid of your mobile phone too, of course, because that is doing exactly the same thing. In fact, a security expert I was chatting to a couple of years ago, he told me that if you turn your phone off, even if you turn it off, the only way to make sure no one can listen into your conversations is to take the battery out. Otherwise, it's still on and it's still listening and it's still sending data about you and your location. I used to think it was such an amazing coincidence when I'd been talking to a friend about something on my phone and the next time I turned on my computer, oh, what a surprise, an advert for that same thing pops up on my screen. Now, sometimes that can be really useful. Sometimes it kind of freaks me out a bit, to be honest but I guess it's part of the business model in today's world. Should we just trust it and get on with it? I mean, if we have nothing to hide, who cares, eh? Or should we be sceptical that someone somewhere is listening to everything we are saying and maybe could use it against us? I'm increasingly feeling I want one of those T-shirts that says, make 1984 fiction again. <laughs>